Hi everyone, this is my incredibly belated review on Love Shy by Lily, Lily Wilkinson. This was sent to me several months ago, at least five months back, by Alan and Unwin. And they they sent it through to me, I think, essentially because I really enjoyed uh, the first book I read by Lily Wilkinson, which was Pink, and I gave it a really favourable review. So they sent me also her pocket full of eyes, which I've yet to read. But, um, yeah, I'm well, having read the two... Uh, novels I have by her, I am can sa safely say I'm a fan of her writing and I'm very much a fan of the characters she creates. So, yeah, this book follows uh, Penny here. Oh, I should state that um, I hate this cover. I think it's horrible. <laughs> I think it really does a dis disservice to the book and it's certainly not going to help in getting uh, people to pick it up and have a look at it, but uh, it rather reminds me of, I don't know, a really bad 90s Disney TV movie or something. Anyway. Um, where was I? Yes, yeah, so my cat is knocking things over in my wardrobe. Hi, all. Anyway, this is the culprit of the noise. Oliver J. Thomas. Oh, of course. Have a clean. Ollie. Oi. Excuse you, mister. Yeah, sniff the books. There you go. Anyway, back to Love Shy. Okay, so the plot features our protagonist, Penny, and she is an aspiring journalist. She's, I think she's the HSC student, which means she's about 17, 18, in her final year of high school, and she aspires to be a Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist and achieve great fame and glory and accolades and whatnot. And she takes herself quite seriously and her journalism very seriously, or at least she likes to think she does. And she uh, doesn't really have many friends um, at all. She doesn't really socialise. Um, her views on almost everybody else, um, her age and at her school and at Gideon, and she thinks they're all quite beneath her. It's, it, it sounds horrible, but... I mean, it is, but at the same time it's somehow quite endearing, because you know she's being stupid. But um, it's just, yeah, her, her, vo her narrative voice is very... It's endearing and, and hilariously, um, yeah, arrogant and misguided and pompous and stuff, but a bit enjoyable at the same time. Um, she's full of, full of flaws, but you kind of like her even more for that. Um, and any whoozle, um, the plot kicks off when she discovers, uh, like a page left up on a computer at school and it's on this love shy forum where guys, I think it's just meant to be for guys, go and they post anonymously about their love shy problems and love shyness is apparently an actual term or illness or something uh, Lily Wilkinson mentions it at the back here um, where guys, you know, are socially awkward and uncomfortable around girls or, you know, the object of their affection and they can't converse with them and they don't like it's a debilitating thing for them uh, often if it's if it's if they've got it badly and so yeah anywho um she finds this post and she decides that she's going to uncover the identity of this anonymous blogger and um help him through his love shyness and help him find find the love that he desires and she'll also investigate the the concept of love shyness and do this big expose in order to gain her all the fame and and glory that she she desires and she'll be doing a good deed in the process at least that's what she's telling herself so um, the first half of the book, not even the first half really, is about her trying to hunt down which of the guys at her school she reckons would be this love shy person. And when she eventually finds him, it's not really a big surprise. Um, it's, um, I, I don't think it's going to be spoilery because I need to talk about this other main character, so I've got to mention who it is. It's a guy named Nick. And, yeah, it essentially just th from then follows their relationship of sorts um, evolve and devolve. Um, as she is trying to essentially force him to get over being shy and and also she's uh, discovering more about him than his very strange views that he has on things and his bizarre upbringing, his very weird family. Um, he's discovering more about her and he's questioning a lot of what she does, especially and what she says to him and, you know, he's telling her, you know, you're essentially doing a really, really selfish thing and telling yourself that it's for the greater good and whatnot, so, um, which of course we know from the outset, and it takes her a while to accept that. Um, yeah, it's, it's really just about, um, 
some, some self-realization and discovery on Penny's part and the growing relationship, that's the only term I think is applicable really, um, between Penny and this Nick guy. It kind of goes from like acquaintances to partnership to friendship to sort of crush on one another and then I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to give away too much of the trajectory of how it functions but what I really like about Lily Wilkinson, her writing and her plot and her characters is that it's never too predictable which is so, it's just, her books are refreshing is the term I would use. Refreshing and honest and it doesn't have to have this really plausible, um, I mean sorry, really predictable and cliched outcome and thus far the two books I've read which are Pink and Love Shide have not um, you know fallen into any of the traps that you probably would expect they would which which is just a, a right blessing and a nice change and makes it all the more enjoyable for me and um, makes me more likely to recommend reading these I'm not sure whether or not, I know Pink has a US edition but I don't know, given that Alan and Unwin essentially only publish stuff that uh, has a release in Australia. I'm not sure whether or not this is available internationally. Couldn't tell ya. Um, I don't think Lily Wilkinson gets enough credit though from readers, especially readers who enjoy just contemporary YA fiction. So I, I would love her to get more, more readership because I think she deserves it. Um, the, the style of her writing is just always really, um, it flows super, super well um, and uh, Penny's narrative voice is just very strong throughout. Um, she includes stuff like there's um, emails, email correspondence, and I think some text messages and stuff, but it all works very well and there's quotes. That, uh, what I really like is there's quotes that separate like in sections from um, from famous journalists that, uh, that Penny really admires and she kind of tries to model her behaviour on these things and she keeps this like, I think it's 12 rules of journalism the principles of journalism and she keeps trying to abide by them and then of course realises she's failing at most of it. Um, uh, yeah, Penny as a protagonist I really did enjoy and I like that she is someone you you can dislike as well as as approve of because it's just a much more human um, build up of, of flaws and personality traits and things. She can be very arrogant and pompous and controlling and condescending, but she can also be really warm and fun and she is very intelligent and she really does, whilst she's incredibly um, bombastic about proclaiming her views on things and you feel like she's doing it just to sound opinionated and well informed, you, you do still get the sense that she genuinely cares about the things she's talking about and she, she genuinely has really strong opinions and ideas and um, it's just nice to be reading about someone like that but she's never, like it never, it never comes across as disingenuine to me like I could, she seemed believable um, yeah, uh, Nick as a character was interesting it's difficult to say how I feel about him because I disliked him for much of the time but what was nice is that I got the feeling that perhaps I was meant to I did feel sorry for him, not as much as I think maybe I was probably supposed to but um, there, there are a lot of moments where you it, you realise at the same time as Penny that his upbringing hasn't been normal and that informs a lot of the way, like how he behaves and a, a great lot of what he says because he has some opinions that are quite worrying and he comes across as quite a sexist um, guy with some very outdated notions on, on romance and relationships and the role of men and women so like discussion of like of sexuality and of gender roles in society comes into play a lot and thank goodness Penny is quite a feminist and likes to sh like shove that back down at him and tell him he's wrong and he's insane um, and so it does, there is some growth on Nick's part, thank goodness to um, discover that maybe he has a lot to learn and he's been ill-informed regarding this sort of thing w what was difficult for me with Nick is that he does behave so strangely and say some really outlandish things and then you see glimpses of his family life that are really disturbing and strange and you realise of course that this, this must have been the major influence on his odd behaviour but you never realise why, it's never discovered or disclosed as to what is actually the problem with his family and what's going on and what his upbringing was really like, he just makes vague references to it and it freaks Penny out so much that she doesn't try and investigate anymore so that felt really like I, I wanted a lot more in that, that arena because it sort of felt like that was left hanging and there wasn't enough explanation for me to 
buy into why Nick behaved that way, except that he obviously had a weird family. So I was real, I was upset that that wasn't explored more. That would have been nice to get to the bottom of that. Given that we were given such a um, evocative glimpse of it all, we did, and then it wasn't delved into. It was kind of just dis discarded. So that was a right shame. Um, there's some supporting characters in the book that are really nice. Um, Penny lives with her dad, and her relationship with her dad is like is fleshed out really nicely. As is her relationship with her mum. Thank goodness, because it felt like it wasn't going to be for a while. Her parents are estranged, they're divorced, and her dad's discovered he's gay, so she's got a boyfriend who's pretty much living with them all the time. So you see her interactions with them, and I, I always appreciate, I was saying to Sydney today, um, I always appreciate when family and parents are included in the story of a teen in these YA novels, as opposed to the amount of times that parents and family are just forgotten and discarded and ignored in favour of whoever the hell the love interest is and stuff. So it's always nice to see development on the family side of things. Um, and I just, yeah, I, I like the progression of Nick and Penny's relationship and it's not, it, yeah, it, it doesn't have a predictable or unwelcome outcome and I was really happy with how things turned out. Um, yeah, and just, I, it was, but it's more a book of Penny's self-discovery, I think and I just really appreciated it for that reason and I just had a lot of fun, I laughed a lot while reading it and just good times, good times had so yeah, just refreshing reads more people should read Lily Wilkinson just ignore the terrible, terrible cover so that's Love Shy I'm giving it 4.5 stars out of 5 and yes, hunt it down if you can if you can find a nicer cover I encourage you to do so